This is the HD Home Run Flex 4K, and this is a paperclip acting as the antenna. Let's see how well this performs on the high VHF band. Now, for context, I'm going to be comparing WSVN, which is an ATSC 1.0 station, to WPLG, which is an ATSC 3.0 station. I cannot overstate how similar these two stations are. Both are operating on the high VHF band with WSVN operating on RF channel 9 and WPLG operating on RF channel 10. Those RF channels are literally sitting right next to each other. WSVN is at 1,007 feet above ground level. WPLG is at 1,014 feet above ground level. WSVN is at 158 kilowatts horizontal and 25.66 kilowatts vertical with WPLG at 156 kilowatts horizontal and 26 kilowatts vertical. To top it all off, their coordinates are exactly the same and they're broadcasting on the same tower. And then these are their propagation characteristics down below. And as you can see, they are basically identical. In fact, one of the arguments that Berkshire Hathaway and Sunbeam Broadcasting were saying to the FCC is that putting WPLG's programming on WSVN literally will have no difference at all in coverage because of how similar these stations are. So this is WSVN with the paperclip. As you might expect, the paperclip is unable to get high VHF RF channel 9 because as you can see, nothing is coming in. Nothing can be decoded on RF channel 9. This is again an ATSC 1.0 station operating on RF channel 9. Now as you can see, the signal strength, negative 73 decibel milliwatts. It's an okay signal strength, but let's do something fascinating. Let's bring up another window and let's go to a different tuner. Let's use tuner one and let's see RF channel 10, which is WPLG. And this is shocking. Again, this is the same HD home run. This is a paperclip. This is the high VHF band. These stations are incredibly similar, and yet these results are night and day. Now, I can show you by going through every single high VHF RF channel that WPLG, the ATSC 3.0 station operating on the high VHF band, is the only one showing up with the paperclip. Isn't that incredible? The amazing thing is how high of a margin it's coming in at. It's coming in at 21 decibels compared to not getting in anything at all with ATSC 1.0. Now this is where more added context would be useful because I exchange around SNR a lot on my channel. Really what this is showing is MER, which is slightly different than SNR, but it's similar. It's used in a digital communications landscape. So if I were to bring up a spectrum analyzer, both of these have the same SNR right now, but you can see that one is coming in and one's not. Technically, WSVN should have around a 20 decibel SNR right now, but even though it's at 20 decibels, it's still not coming in. Now, why would that be? This situation can be determined with physics. So first off, there's a whole bunch of metal all around here. There's metal here. There's metal here on the window. There's metal here. There's a bunch of reflections going on. There's foliage wagging outside. There's a whole bunch of multipath interference. If the broadcaster has the right settings, the signal will be incredibly immune to multipath interference, which is the biggest thing causing the signal like WSVN to not come in. There are other things that are added to the ATSC 3.0 signal in order to enhance it. Let's look at those using the ADTH box. All right, so I've got the ADTH box using a paperclip as well. That is my antenna and boom, it is picking up the WPLG ATSC 3.0 signal. Now I can show you the SNR on the ADTH box. As you can see, the global SNR is 17 decibels. They goofed. They're not supposed to put DBM there. It's supposed to just be DB. Hopefully they fix that in a future software update. But nonetheless, it's coming in at around 17 to 18 decibels. So all the way at the bottom of the technical information page, there's all of this really valuable data that the ADTH box displays. And this is some of the magic behind why an ATSC 3.0 signal is just so much better at being received compared to ATSC 1.0. So let's go through some of this. So first off, we've got FFT size 32K. The higher the number, the more multipath immunity there is. Now, there are three options. There's 8K, 16K, and 32K. This is the highest size 
this means that they are sending this signal with the most multipath immunity in terms of the FFT size. Going on, that little thing there that says GI4 underscore 768, GI stands for guard interval. This determines how immune to multipath interference a PLP is. A guard interval of 1 underscore 192 is the least immune, but the guard interval of 12 underscore 4864 is the most immune. So they have a guard interval with a very good multipath immunity. Further, LDPC stands for low density parity check, and that 64K stands for 64,800 bits. There are two options that broadcasters can send with ATSC 3.0. 64,800, and 16,200. The 64,800 setting allows for a lower minimum receive SNR. So these were all settings that the broadcaster decided to use in order to make the signal very easy to receive so that something like this could pick it up, even if this station is on the high VHF band. This paperclip with the right settings from an ATSC 3.0 station could receive low VHF stations from a few dozen miles away. And that is what is so cool about ATSE 3.0. This paperclip is worse at receiving RF than the antennas in your phone receive RF. So then think about that. If this is worse than your phone, your phone can start to easily receive ATSC 3.0 signals. And that is where I believe the future is headed. That's why I've been making such a big deal about these paperclips because these suck as antennas, relatively speaking. Your phone could do a way better job. And that's why I believe the future is looking bright for the VHF band. All right, I was editing the video and I started noticing that there were comments from people on my YouTube short that were wondering if the paperclip even does anything. So app, only HD home run on my local network. I'm going to pull out the paperclip as you see here. See how my hand's getting close to it and it's actually coming in. If my hand goes away, it goes away. And then if my hand gets close, the USVN comes in, isn't that cool? All right, well, I'm going to, I'm gonna show the paper clip. Boom. So I am not lying, this thing, this thing is working. So I just pulled it out, it's completely gone. So this this is working completely. Thank you to all my Patreon members and channel members. I appreciate you guys so much and I'll see you in the next video. If you like this video, consider subscribing and liking the video. Follow Western New York Over the Air on Instagram, Twitter, and threads at WNY Over the Air. Like Western New York Over the Air on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash WNY Over the Air. Support the channel on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash WNY Over the Air. And check out WNYOverTheAir.com for live band scans, cord cutting tips, and much more.